Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we'll show you how to upgrade or replace the hard drives in a 2009 Mac Mini server. Make sure to watch the video all the way through before attempting this upgrade. As you'll see, getting into the Mini is a somewhat difficult procedure and professional installation is recommended. We've already shut down and unplugged the Mac Mini, gathered our materials, and are working on a soft static-free work surface. We are now ready to begin. To get inside the Mini, we'll need to flip it over. To loosen the clips holding the top cover on, you'll need a small putty knife which can be found in most hardware stores. Carefully insert the blade of the putty knife between the inner and outer case. Then, gently but firmly pry outward with the knife which will undo the inner clips on the case. You'll hear a series of pops as the clips come free. Carefully work your way around the Mini's edges. Once you get to the rear of the Mini, the case should be separated enough that you can lift the cover up and off. Inside, there are three antennas that need to be removed. The large antenna on the right has a small clip underneath which you'll need to squeeze to release. Set the spring aside so you don't lose it. You'll also want to make sure to loosen the tape holding the antenna's cable to the case. Then, arrange the antenna so it's out of the way, being careful not to yank the cable out. The other two antennas simply lift up and out. These also have springs that you should set aside. The antenna in the front right corner also has a piece of tape holding the cable to the case, which should be removed. Next, we need to detach the SATA ribbon connector. The easiest way to detach it is at this point. Simply use your nylon pry tool to gently lift it and it will disconnect easily. There are four screws that you will need to remove to detach the drive assembly from the base. The front left screw is located here. The rear left screw is located here. The right rear screw can be found here. The right front screw is larger than the others and can be found here. Once you've removed these four screws, you can gently lift the drive assembly up and away from the base. It may take a little maneuvering to get the assembly clear. First, you'll need to remove the top drive tray from the assembly. There's a total of six screws you need to remove. The first two are along the outside edge of the tray. The second pair are along the opposite side of the tray. The final pair is along the back edge, holding the tray to the SATA connector. Once these screws have been removed, you should be able to slide the tray forward and off. To detach the hard drive from the tray, remove the four screws on the bottom holding it in place.
To remove the bottom hard drive, you must first remove the heat sensor, located near the outside front corner of the drive. Use your nylon tool to detach it. You'll also need to detach the piece of tape holding the cable to the drive. There are four screws holding the drive in place. The first two are located here. The other two are located here. Once the screws are removed, simply slide the drive forward to detach it from the SATA connector and then remove the drive from the assembly. On the drive you just removed, there are two foam pads. Gently peel these from the drive and set them aside. With one of your new drives oriented with the SATA connectors facing away from you, place the two foam pads on the top left and bottom left corners. There should be enough residual adhesive to allow them to stick. Place this drive in the bottom drive bay. Attach the SATA connector, then use the four screws to secure it in place. Finally, press the heat sensor back into place, and then tape the cable down. Place your other hard drive into the top tray so that the SATA connector is towards the rear edge. There are guides to help make sure it's aligned properly. Holding the drive in place, turn the assembly over and secure the hard drive with the four screws you removed earlier. Then, slide the top tray into place and attach the SATA connector. Finally, replace the six screws that held the top tray in place. Replace the drive assembly, being careful not to pinch the antenna cables. You'll be able to feel the assembly connector slide into place when it's properly aligned. Once the assembly is in place, reattach the four screws you removed earlier. Remember that the larger screw goes in the front right corner. Place the springs on the antenna posts, then attach the antennas themselves by pushing them into place. Don't forget to replace the tape on any cables that had it before. For the large antenna on the right, you may need to squeeze the clip you used to remove it in order to replace it. Finally, reattach the SATA ribbon cable by simply lining up the connector and gently pushing it in. Once that's done, you may now replace the top cover and push down evenly around all edges until it clips flush back into place. You can now plug the Mac Mini server back in, hook it up, and turn it on.